Christ the King Church, Kalinochi. God bless you. Friends, we're so grateful to be together in this Easter spirit. Thank you to our international alumni for their sharing gorgeous videos of their communities at worship this Easter. Friends, we continue with our Easter song. This one, friends, comes from Nigeria. Hallelujah in Olua. Hallelujah in Olua. Oshun, 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 Baba. Hallelujah, in Olua. You don't need to sing in Yoruba with me, friends. You can sing in English. Listen. Hallelujah, praise our God. Hallelujah, praise our God. Praises, loud praises, we sing to our God. Hallelujah. 
praise our God. Friends, you can sing on mute with me. Echo after me. Hallelujah in Olua. Sing with me. Hallelujah in Olua. Now listen. Hallelujah in Olua. Try it. Hallelujah in Olua. Listen. Oshun, 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 Baba. You can do it. Oshun, 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 Baba. Hallelujah in Olua. Hallelujah in Olua. Now let's sing in English, friends. Hallelujah, praise our God. Hallelujah, praise our God. Praises, loud praises, we sing to our God. Hallelujah in Olua. Wherever you are, friends, feel the energy of resurrection in your body, this energy of joy and celebration today. Sing with me one last time. Hallelujah, praise our God. Oh, oh, oh. hallelujah, praise our God. Praises, loud praises, we sing to our God. Hallelujah, praise our God. One last time, hallelujah, praise our God. Welcome, welcome, friends of Eden Theological Seminary. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus and the God of resurrection and new life. I'm Reverend Dr. Sonia Williams, Dean of Students, and on behalf of the faculty, the Board of Trustees, and staff of Eden Seminary, I welcome you to the inauguration of Reverend Dr. Deborah Kraus as Eden's 14th president. We are so glad that you could join us today and hope that you're able to participate in many of the other events here at Eden happening this week. If you're on Zoom, we invite you to write in the chat your name, your connection with Eden, and the location from which you are participating so that we all can get a sense of the great company of saints gathered here in this celebration. Go ahead, begin to type, put your name and where you're located. Welcoming you to this event today are members of our Eden's Board of Trustees. They are Kevin Anthony, Sue Art, Paul Brady, Deborah Burris, Carla Cooper, Jane Zimmer Daniels, David Lucas, Timothy Luhrmann, Matt Miaski, Nelson Pierce, Susan Nell Rowe, David Sarahoff, Darlene Soule, Noel Tabor, Tom Tiemann, Stephanie Weiner, and Ann Wilson, Mark Schaefel, and Mary Doms. And of course, Eden's faculty is present on this beautiful, beautiful day and grateful for all of those who have been able to come and join us today, beginning with Drs. Clint McCann, Damianti Niles, Kristen Leslie, Christopher Grundy, Laurel Kauf Taylor, Adam Ployd, Deetra Wise Baker, and President Krause and I serve as faculty as well. We're thankful to have with us some of Eden's faculty emeriti John Brocky, Enoch Oblesby, Martha Robertson, Hill Shore, and Karen T. So grateful for you today. And we're pleased that David Greenhow, Eden's President Emeritus, is with us today. So glad to see you, so glad to see you. And finally, we are so excited and honored to welcome the Reverend Dr. Valerie Bridgman as our preacher today. 
Dr. Bridgman is Dean and Vice President of Academic Affairs, as well as Associate Professor of Homiletics and Hebrew Bible at Methodist Theological School of Ohio. She also is Founding President and CEO of Woman Preach Incorporated. She has been in licensed or ordained ministry since 1977. Dr. Bridgman earned her PhD in Biblical Studies, Hebrew Bible Concentration, and Secondary Studies in Ethics from Baylor University. She earned her Masters of Divinity from Austin Theological Seminary in Austin, Texas, and a Bachelor's of Arts degree with a double major of Communication and Religion from Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. She is widely published having edited or contributed to such well-known works as the Africana Bible, Preaching with Sacred Fire, and Those Preaching Women. She is a peace activist and advocate for human rights and was inducted into the 2010 class of Martin Luther King Jr. Colloquium of Scholars and Preachers at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, please, now please join us in this call to worship led by the presidents of five other seminaries related to the United Church of Christ. Come all you who seek divine wisdom. Come all you who are curious, questioning and ready to share. All who hunger and thirst for justice, for a day when all shall sit under their own vines and their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. All who are weary and heavy laden, who long to be given a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Holy One. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction. Let those who have ears listen to what the Spirit is saying. Do you have sight and yet fail to see? Do you have hearing and yet fail to hear? I am about to do a new thing. I am about to do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Wisdom has set her table. Come you that are blessed by my mother and father. Come and eat of Sophia's bread. Come, drink deeply from the well of wisdom. That all may dwell in peace and community with one another, caring with mutual affection and tending the earth. Come, let us listen and worship together. Oh 
sun But of my heart Whatever befall Still be my vision O ruler a communal prayer in which we seek the divine not only in our hearts, but also in our midst. We invite you to find a posture of prayer, to close your eyes if that's helpful, to join us as we open ourselves to a moment and to the spirit. Please join me in prayer. Holy and beloved one, divine mystery of a thousand faces, you who chose to dwell in the creation you love, we raise, we who raise up, are raised up from the ash heap of our grief and isolation, as we gather with joy in these 50 days. We give thanks for your resurrection, resilience, your tenacious grace, and for the ligatures of loving kindness that hold us together to you. Be our wisdom, be our deeper truth, our passionate resolve. Be now the source of our hunger and thirst for justice, our vision of resurrecting love, made real and enfleshed amid the rubble and decay of falsehood and betrayal. Build here with these people a house of wisdom and resolve. Draw us together in a common purpose of your liberating labor. Remind us as we come into your presence that humble awe before you and the vastness of your creation, that gratitude and praising and joining our desire to yours. These are the beginnings, the root, the foundation of any authority or insight we may claim. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, that we may lay aside in maturity and walk in the ways of Jesus, whose re revolutionary compassion would, cannot be snuffed out. It is in his name we pray, the risen one, whose life still echoes resoundingly down through the centuries and in the life in which we share. Amen. Amen. A reading from the ninth chapter of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You, that simple turn in here. To those with, without sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer wins abuse. Whoever rebukes the wicked gets hurt. A scoffer who is rebuked will only hate you. The wise, when rebuked, will love you. Give instruction to the wise, and they will become wiser still. Teach the righteous, and they will gain in learning. All of the Holy One is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is in sight. For by me, your days will be multiplied and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scoff, you alone will bear it. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. God.
Hallelujah. What a wonderful song to bring us into this moment. I just want to say my amen to that. Hallelujah. Grace and peace to each of you in the name of God who loves us so deeply and in the presence of Jesus Christ, our elder brother, the first of many from the dead, and in the power of the Holy Spirit that keeps us all and propels us forward into the work that we are called. When I first received the call from my friend, mentor, and colleague, Dr. Deborah uh, Krauss, to preach for her installation during this week of convocation, I was honored and I still am honored. If I could have picked one celebration in which the chair shared, this would be the one. She's been a great mentor and friend to me as I came into the deanship four years ago. Her 13 years as a dean of a seminary oozes forth wisdom. It made sense to me that one of Eden's own graduates and a and 13 year dean whose commitment to Eden should become your 14th president and the first woman to hold this position. When she called me to say that she would be the next president of Eden, I danced in my living room with joy. Her witness as a scholar activist in relation to her commitment to Christ is a joy to behold. Who can better speak to the school's commitment with passion, with clarity and joy than Dr. Krause? I was thrilled to know that the board had the wisdom and insight to choose her to lead in this season. And what a season it is. 
theological education is in the midst of a seismic shift. The world, as Dr. Renita Weems says, is on fire and people's hearts are failing them because of fear. But from the time I caught glimpses and pictures of Dr. Krauss in the streets with community activists and advocates for justice after the killing of Michael Brown Jr. to the times of watching her make space for theological students and professors from around the country to gather to reflect and learn and lead together, I knew I wanted her to be my mentor and my friend and she has become that and more. So before I turn to today's sermon more fully, I want to invite all of Eden's alum to actually give in her honor today. She didn't ask me to do that and neither did anybody else, but you should give. Stats are that schools average around 7% of their alum who give. What a gift it would be if that number rose to 100% today. Every amount counts from 500 to 5,000. Do your best and give. Somebody put the link in the chat so that people can start giving. Now, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be accept acceptable in your sight, sovereign God, our strength and our redeemer. As I prayed about and thought about scripture for what theology looks like for public ministries of resilience and solidarity, my spirit took me to a biblical figure, Hokmah. Hokma is the Hebrew word for wisdom and is grammatically feminine in its rendering. In the ancient Hebraic mind, wisdom is a woman. I like to imagine her in a fiery red flowing dress with dark skin and hair ablaze, hard to look on and difficult to resist. In the text, the chapter before Proverbs 9 that you heard today, Hokma is created and is also creator. She is both outside of God and a personified characteristic of the divine one. She may very well be the very breath of God that shimmied, ruach, that shimmied across creation to call things into being in God's mouth and on God's shoulder. She was formed, she says in Proverbs 8, 23, in the ancient of days and before the earth was, before the mountains settled into place. Maybe she is El Shaddai, the phrase that means God of the mountains, or more accurately, the breasted God, bringing nourishment to creation. She says in Proverbs 8, 30 and 31, I was beside God as a master of crafts. And the Hebrew there is uncertain. I might translate it in its expansive way. I was there as an artist, as an expert worker, as an architect, making sure everything fit together. She says, I was having fun, smiling before God the whole time, frolicking with Hashem's inhabited earth and delighting in the human race. Wisdom knows how to have fun. Some scholars imagine that Hokma is in fact the feminine face of God or the consort of the deity, fierce and a partner. Some don't know what to do with her. Committed as they are to monotheism, they try to diminish her and not give her much of a place because how can she be this powerful, this from the beginning, this bold? But wisdom smiles at human folly and dances in creation all the time. She can be seen in the way nature interacts with nature and heard over the rush of many waters. Wisdom is not to be trifled with. If you're really listening, you know that wisdom is humanity's primary teacher. That is, unless the said human chooses foolishness and scoffing at learning, but I'll get to that later. Long before liberation theology as we know it, Lady Wisdom gave us this mantra, reflect, learn, and then act, and then reflect on what you've learned. She understood this truth that the preacher in Ecclesiastes 1.13 gave us. It is an unhappy business that God has given to humans to be busy with. That is reason number one to apply our minds and seek wisdom. God has left humanity with hard things to deal with. 
And the only thing left is to attend to wisdom and learn how to cope in the struggle. And because wisdom starts out dancing, she provides us with her essence so that we may thrive in the presence of struggle and injustice. It reminds me of a quote I share often from Alice Walker, hard times require furious dancing. Wisdom is the first dancer in creation. She is multivocal and speaks in many ways. And everything she says is spoken so that humans may live in abundance in the presence of the tough times we face. In today's text, one of the primary ways we know wisdom is as an expert chef and a host, knowing how to prepare a feast and spread a table. But the meal starts with the where and not the what. Wisdom builds her house. It is sturdy with seven pillars and indicates that it's either a temple or the home of a well-off patron. Sarah Kennick says that the house is the cosmos itself and the pillars are the ones on which the earth itself sits. Wisdom builds this house. She is strong, independent, resourceful, has agency. She is a warrior woman, wise and strong like the one in Proverbs 31, running a business and managing her household. She reminds me of my mama who often said that if she had a slice of bread, you had something to eat. In other words, whatever wisdom has is for sharing beyond her initial reach. All indication is she does not merely direct the feast, but helps prepare it. She has servants, but she co-creates with them just as she partnered with God in creation. Now she spreads a feast meats and breads and wine from her own vineyard. Unlike the sister of Song of Songs, she has kept her own vineyard and she kept it well and it has produced. She invites whoever will, sending servants to the high grounds and to the low streets. It is hospitality of the best order. She calls the simple, the text says, and those without sense, parenthetically. I imagine that there are many first year seminarians who come to seminary thinking they know a certain thing. And before the first semester is over, they begin to think of themselves as simple and without sense because none of us really know what we don't know until we're in a seven pillared house of wisdom. End of my parenthesis. Is that not the very definition of theological pursuit? bringing our ignorance to a table spread from which we may feast and be filled. In chapter nine, verses five and six, wisdom says, come eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Abandon your simplistic ways and live. Walk in the way of understanding. Hear those words again. Abandon your simple ways and live. Walk in the way of understanding. Abandon your simple ways, give up your sense of certainty and come to a banquet filled with food you may never have tasted. It's not comfort food, at least not at first, but it's a conucopia of delights from God's storehouse. Give yourself over to complex reasoning and the multiplicity of possibilities. As Isaiah 55 says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to these waters. You who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in rich food. There is a cost to wisdom, but the cost is not in the price of the food. That's free. The cost is in the letting go of that which is not life-giving and risking the paths of unknown insight so that we may be useful to the world. This meal, this cost is the goal and role of theological education, especially that education that seeks to prepare leaders to be public theologians of resilience and to stand in solidarity with all who need defense and support. I don't have to do the roll call of the hard things we, we face if we would desire as 
Amos said in 524, for justice to roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. You know the heartache of parents as they bury their children from lead poisoning in water drank in Flint or police brutality all around this country. You know the strain of folk who don't know from where their next meal will come or who struggle with addictions. You know the stories. But the way to the streets to face these hard things is from the seat at wisdom's table. The conversation around the table where bread is broken and the wine flows freely, where debate flourishes and where questions are expected so that understanding become a way of living, a way of walking in the world. Wisdom calls the simple from the streets to the table so that they may be equipped to return to the streets with understanding and with the essence of Mama Hukma herself dripping from their lips, drunk on her wine of hope, of joy, of renewal. It's Dr. Krauss and Mama Cat serving up meals, smiles, and a word of encouragement in the streets of St. Louis and Ferguson. Training in theological school invites people to come sit around the table in community, what Eaton calls global intimacy, to delve into the depths of despair and destruction and come out on the other side with insight. It's learning from street theologians and bringing it back to chew on and consider alongside renowned scholars who may or may not have been in the streets themselves. Wisdom's table is in the classroom, in the hallways, on the lawn, and now in Zoom links, in conversations with co-learners and professors, alum and incoming students as each broker their own concerns in community with Lady Wisdom as the table, at the table, and on the table to be imbibed and to imbue all who will let her with her essence. In Hebraic thought, wisdom is more than intelligence and pieces of information. Wisdom comes from the heart, not the head. Wisdom comes as one yields to the notion that they, he, she, they could be wrong and therefore can be corrected. That is a part of the meat that is at the table that is spread. Wisdom, as Dr. Will Gaffney points out, is a craft. She is aware that you could choose her nemesis, Lady Foolishness, but that's a sermon for another time. Remember the rest of the text you heard in Proverbs 9? Whoever corrects a scoffer wins abuse. Whoever rebukes the wicked gets hurt. A scoffer who is rebuked will only hate you. The wise, when rebuked, will love you. Give instruction to the wise and they will become wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will gain in learning. These are the tough words wisdom gives us. Whoever corrects a scoffer wins abuse. Whoever rebukes the wicked gets hurt. We know this. We know it because we go into the street to face the scoffing and to face the wicked and we bear the hurt in our bodies and in our souls. You learn these truths while sitting at wisdom's table. It's a warning, a truth, a maxim. And if you know it before you face the wicked, the scoffer, then you are able to return to the table with tales of solidarity, of resistance, and of persistence. My mother used to say it this way, if you think of it as a bumpy road and not just a bump in the road, you'll be all right. That's what happens when you give instruction to the wise. They become wiser. When you teach the righteous, they gain learning. Wisdom is the all of God on display and is at the center of insight. And if you want to hear her speak, you will run to her seven pillared gathering places. Find a seat at the table, scoot over when another traveler comes into the door and commit yourself to learning while in community. This is what I've learned about wisdom, the very essence of the God we love, the very core of the God we serve. And it is how I know that Dr. Deborah Krause is wisdom's kin. 
She exhibits this hunger and this thirst for whatever wisdom has to offer and prepares to take it back out into the streets. I invite you to the table, Ken, to learn to grow, to be nourished and nurtured so that you may go back into the streets ready for the hard things we must face, assured that you are in a great company of witnesses and that Lady Wisdom smiles as we go. Ashe, amen, and it is so. We respond with joy, friends. We respond with words that I had a, the privilege of hearing Dr. Bridgman's uh, sermon before you heard it and got a chance to write something and invite you to walk. Listen, friends. Come walk in the way of wisdom. Come feast at the table she has set. Come learn and create, renew and reshape, and hear her call to build a world of justice, love, and peace for all. Friends, this is a walking song, so you might find that your body needs to walk with wisdom. Come walk in the way of wisdom. Come feed at the table she has set. Come learn and create, renew and reshape, and hear her call to build a world of justice, love, and peace for all. Here in a few times, and join me and sing. Come walk in the way of wisdom. Come feast at the table she has set. Come learn and create, renew and reshape, and hear her call to build a world of justice, love, and peace for all. Come walk, come walk in the way of wisdom. Come feast at the table she has set. Come learn and create, renew and reshape, and hear her call to build a world of justice, love, and peace for all. And hear her call, and hear her call, to build a world of justice, love, and peace for all. Last time, and hear her call, to build a world of justice, love, and peace for all. We are gathered here today, not only to celebrate a new era in the life of Eden Seminary and to rejoice in the good news of God's great love made known in Jesus Christ, but also to join together in covenant with the Reverend Dr. Deborah Krauss as we inaugurate her as Eden's 14th president. We do this remembering the generations of faithful people who came before us, those who gave the best of their talents and energies here at Eden to educate and to become faith leaders for the church and the common good. With these ancestors standing behind us, we come to add the best of our own efforts for the sake of the bright future that God envisions for the world of reparation and repair towards which the Holy Spirit draws us, following in the way of justice and compassion laid out before us by Jesus the Christ. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, 
let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. I'm Susan Rowe. I'm the chair of Eden Seminary's Board of Trustees. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I welcome you and offer our thanks for your presence with us today. We are thankful for the board members and faculty who served on the search committee and to all who, of you who helped and supported us as we searched far and wide for Eden's next president. It is my great pleasure to declare that the Board of Trustees, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, has called the Reverend Dr. Deborah Krauss to be its 14th president. Having engaged in a national search, having interviewed numerous candidates, and having reviewed thoroughly her qualifications for this post, we are confident that she is the best candidate for leadership at this moment and will serve the seminary and its network with acumen, courage, and vision. By unanimous vote, the faculty of Eden Seminary has affirmed the call of the Reverend Deborah Krauss to serve as the seminary's next president. God be praised. I'm Starsky Wilson. Uh, I am a student uh, of Deb Krauss. I was and I am. Uh, I serve as president of the Children's Defense Fund in Washington, D.C. 12 years ago. Uh, I had the occasion to sit uh, as Dean Krauss then presided at my installation. And I'm honored to provide words of exhortation from scripture here at, her, at hers. Hear the words of Jesus, dear daughter and disciple of Christ. On this journey that will be so difficult ahead, follow me and I will make you a fisher of humanity. Hear also these words, servant leader among us. You hear also, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles dominate them and their quote unquote, great leaders exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Whoever should be first among you must serve all. Hear the words of the Lord. siblings in the spirit, the board of trustees and the faculty of Eden Theological Seminary have called the Reverend Dr. Deborah Krauss to serve as the seminary's president. They have declared that she has met all of the necessary conditions required for this office. Deborah, seeing that you are called to ordain ministry by the grace of God, and that Eden Theological Seminary has been led to call you as president. Are you willing to enter into covenant with the members of the Eden community? I am willing and promise to serve the seminary, the church and the common good, preaching and teaching the word of God, guiding the life and mission of Eden Seminary as a seminary of the United Church of Christ and a source of wisdom and leadership formation within the larger network of the progressive Christian movement. Members of the Eden faculty and staff, get ready to unmute yourselves or to type something in the chat as you joyously respond to your commitment to Deborah. So we ask you now, will you promise to labor together with her in the ministry of the gospel and the mission of this school and to give her due honor and support for the sake of your mutual ministry in Christ's name? 
If so, I invite you to unmute yourself or to type in the chat and to joyously respond, we will. We will. We will. We will. We will. Students, alumni, partner congregations, friends, and collaborators in the United Church of Christ and in many other denominations, faiths, and organizations, will you covenant with us to receive Deborah Krauss as president of Eden Theological Seminary to honor and support her as she leads this community in its mission and ministry and to add your engagement and imagination to the matrix of ministry in which Eden finds its purpose? If so, please type in the chat, we will. What a joyous moment this is for so many of us. I have the honor now of praying over the newly installed president of Eden Theological Seminary. I bring you this prayer not only on behalf of a proud United Church of Christ that celebrates this call, but also on behalf of the class of Eden Seminary 1988, a classmate of Deb's and many of her classmates are on this call with us. And together we offer this prayer. Holy Spirit of the living God and the risen Christ, you who are the lifeblood of the church and who calls forth leaders in every generation to participate in the teaching and preaching ministry of the church, today we celebrate that one of those leaders has said yes to her call to be the president of Eden Theological Seminary, that you have equipped her with gifts and talents sufficient for this calling is evident to all who know her, that you have been present throughout her ministry in ways that have encouraged, empowered, and sustained her is again evident to all, but intimately known to her alone. It is with confidence in your abiding, brooding presence that she comes today to say yes to the new and rather extraordinary call that she has accepted. And we gather today with a confident hope that the one whom you have called into this ministry will not only be fully equipped for her time as our leader, but also fully supported by you, by the body of Christ whom she serves alongside and by the family that is and loves Eden Theological Seminary. As we install her today, we also lift her up in prayer and lift up all who will enter these hallowed halls while she serves as Eden's president. They come here with their own needs to be equipped, empowered and prepared for the ministry in which you, in, to which you have invited them. And you are our common denominator the one whose calling brings us to this place of discernment and preparation and sustains us through the long, hard days that are ministry. It is to you we turn in this moment of celebration and anticipation. And so, Holy Spirit of the living God and the risen Christ, caller of the baptized, the confirmed, and the ordained ministers of the church, provide our beloved leader, the Reverend Dr. Deborah Krauss, with blessings abundant, with patient forbearance, with vision sufficient to meet the challenges of a changing world, with the courage of the prophets and the love of all disciples. And throughout her tenure, may the gospel of our beloved Jesus be known and shown to all the world because of what her leadership makes possible at Eden Theological Seminary. To God be the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We sing and again affirm, friends, come walk in the way. Come walk in the way of wisdom. Come feast at the table she has set. 
Come learn and create, renew and reshape, and hear her call to build a world of lustis, love, and peace for all. One last time. Come a walk in the way of wisdom. Come feast at the table she has set. Come learn and create, renew and reshape, and hear her call to build a world of justice, love, and peace for all. For all we pray. Amen. Madam President, my sister and friend, on this historic day, may your path always be illumined by the wisdom that comes from God. May your joy of learning grow even as you teach and lead. May your deep compassion and learning for a just world inspire students and faculty and colleagues alike with the courage to take the road less travel. May the compassion and love you shared with so many be returned to you. And always know when the days are difficult, you are not alone. You have a village of sisters interceding and loving you. And may you never doubt that every experience of your life has prepared you for this very moment. Madam President, my sister, my friend, like the prophetess Deborah, you take your place at a critical time in human history, a time to nourish and nurture those who, like you, will go forth to serve in holy ways. Your name, like hers, is rooted in the Devar, the word we have come to count on from you, the word of fierce truth, of loyal sisterhood, of wise counsel, channeling loving kindness into the cracks of creation. We have come to count on you to speak your mind and our hearts. The prophetess Deborah gave the people a generation of peace, but we only know of her from a tale of war. But we wonder, what other wisdom came from under the palm tree of Deborah when the people came to listen and learn from her? We are ready with you as our president to reclaim our place in the story past and present, writing your own song to carry us forward as President, Doctor, Pastor, Preacher, Prophet Deb, sitting under your palm in Eden, that garden that reminds us of the way things could be, in harmony with all creation, in justice with all people, in safety for our children as they sleep and in the streets, as you are the kind of fierce warrior woman who will once again lead to a real peace. Many blessings for you, for Bill and your family, and for your beloved community. We love you. Madam President, my sister, my friend, on this historic and most amazing day, it's an honor to be able to offer words of blessing adapted from a blessing in the Talmud said to be recited by students whenever they left the presence of their beloved teacher. As one of my most beloved teachers, I offer this blessing for you. May you live to see a world you have helped to create, one that rests on the foundations of justice, compassion, and peace. May you trust in generations past and yet to be. May your heart be filled with intuition and your words be rich in understanding. May songs of praise and gratitude surround you and your vision clarify a straight path before you. May your eyes shine with the light of learning. May your fulfillment be in righteousness. And may you always be guided by the presence of the one who unites us all. Amen. Madam President, dear friend, I'm going to co-opt a story from the Talmud to say to you, I would bless you with an enthusiastic passion for your tradition and your texts, but you already have that. And I would bless you with a deep love for all people, but you already have that. And I would bless you with a profound sense of justice for our entire world, but you already have that. And so the greatest blessing that I can give to you is that every student who walks out the door of Eden Seminary has just as much love passion, 
and sense of justice as you demonstrate to us every day. Madam President, my sister, my friend, as you begin this new journey, may your path be fragranced with the wisdom you have gleaned through your years of ministry in this sacred place. May the support you have offered both colleagues and students on their journeys rise to meet you at this moment. As you have loved, may you be loved. As you have ministered, may you be ministered to. As you have challenged, may you also be challenged. As you have consistently shown up, Deb, may we who love Eden show up with you now. May prayers of blessings and new life and abundance and joy infuse this holy ground of learning with more than enough resources and love for the faculty, the staff, the students and your families to thrive as you continue to work together and bear witness to what God will do. We love you. We're with you. Now let's get to work. Friends, we invite you to offer your blessings as well. As we listen to a beautiful song blessing from Rabbi James Stone Goodman, we invite you in the chat to join in the celebration, pouring out blessings for President Krauss, for the seminary, and for all of our work together. to the world there is a mountain and on that mountain a rock and from that rock issues the freshest purest water in the world and on the other edge of the world beats the great heart of the world the great heart of the world yearns for the water longs for it and all the hearts of the world sing a song of longing Every night when the sun goes down, the great heart of the world sings a song of longing, a song of yearning, and all the hearts of the world join in. Now there are several true persons of compassion who walk the earth every evening and gather up all these fragments of song and pull them together into time just enough time for another day in this way the world continues to exist all hearts sing a song of yearning a song of longing all the world's a fountain all the fountains flowing peace blessed is a fountain the source of peace blessed are we waiting blessed are we making Blessed are we learning out from our influences, our teachers, our inspirations. We stand on their shoulders. Here comes Miriam Hanivia, the prophetess. She's carrying a drum in her hand and we all followed her with drums and dancing. And Miriam sings with us. Shiru, 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 la donna ki ga o ga Shiru, 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 sing a new song Shiru, shiru, la donna ki ga o ga We are not alone, we are fed by an overflowing fountain Those who came before us Our loyalty to those who come after us who are your influences, your inspirations, your sources? They speak in praises, in beauty, in nuance. They deliberate, be deliberate, they say. Raise up many students, they say. Expand the perimeter, they say. Bring your teachings large. Bring your teachings large. Blessed are you receiving. Blessed are you giving. Blessed is the holy community representing. Did 
Baruch Blessed are you who teaches to your people in this fashion. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends, for adding your blessings. I'd like you to know that there will be a Zoom reception following this service, not in the webinar format where, that we're using at the moment, but in a Zoom room where participants can actually see each other. A link to that reception will appear uh, down in the chat at the end of the postlude. You may either click on that link or copy and paste it into your web browser. We would be happy to have you join us for some greetings and some informal conversation. And now we will hear a few words from our new president who has already begun to lead with vision and energy. Friends of God, the next voice that you hear will be that of the Reverend Dr. Deborah Krauss, newly inaugurated president of Eden Theological Seminary. With thanksgiving to God and love for you all, I want to say thank you to a, my amazing family, Bill Perman, Reverend Bill Perman, and our daughters, Isabel and Rebecca. To my beautiful mom and my dear siblings and cousins. To the brilliant Eden faculty and our stellar emeriti. To the intrepid Eden staff and all of my amazing colleagues on the leader team and the president's team. To Eden's dedicated trustees who bring their gifts from an array of important places into the service of supporting the seminary in its mission. To Eden's current students, who will forever be our very favorites for staying the course with us with such faithfulness in this community of learning and faith while we have navigated this pandemic time together. To Eden's brilliant alumni network, stretching across the nation and around the globe, your love for your ministries and the people you serve and for your school inspire us every day. For the church ecumenical, in particular, the PCUSA, Giddings Lovejoy Presbytery and First Presbyterian Church St. Louis, and the United Church of Christ from among its leadership and membership at the National Conference Association and congregational levels, I am blessed to call so many of you friends. And I thank my friends in leadership in the UCC for being in the service today. To our amazing contextual educational network, congregations, organizations, ministries, with whom we are blessed to teach, learn, and yearn for justice in this region. To colleagues across the Association of Theological Schools who faithfully navigate the challenges of educating leaders for the church in the midst of massive cultural and institutional change each of us trying to hold up our seven pillared houses. 
for colleagues in theological education across the globe, partners in the Reformed Church of East Africa, the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, Ghana, the Church of the American Ceylon Mission in Sri Lanka, and so many more. We feel the power of the Spirit's bond in our collective mission, and we give thanks for you, and we give thanks to God for you. To friends, teachers, classmates, beloveds, who have inspired me from the halls of Price School, John Burroughs School, Amherst College, Eden Seminary, and Emory University. I will forever be changed by and grateful for our learning and living together. To my sisters of faith who bless me richly always with their brilliance, their challenge, their friendship, and their love, and for your sharing a blessing today. To my pot bangers family and my movement family with the visionary leadership of Mama Cat Daniels, who through the Ferguson uprising for justice for Mike Brown up until now have made the Bible come alive for me and reformed and rededicated my ministry and teaching and scholarship forever. The crossroads of all of these communities Witness to in this service is evidence of God's goodness and provision in my life and vocation. And I am so grateful as Eden's president to bring this provision into the service of the seminary's mission. For this worship service, finally, I extend my deep thanks to all of the participants and attendees, and in particular to Dr. Valerie Bridgman for such powerful preaching, to my colleagues, Professor Christopher Grundy and Paul Vasile, to Katie Hotze and the whole tech team, and Mary Schaller Blafus, to Danita Carter, to all who pulled this service together. This service has borne the love and hope I hope to bear out, all done sustainably on Zoom. God bless you. I am humbled, honored, and inspired to serve this school in its mission to empower leaders for the progressive Christian movement in our world, in our nation, in this moment, we could not have a more clear sense of our purpose to empower faith leaders and communities to resist white supremacy in its intersecting oppressions of racism, sexism, heterosexism, ableism, and colonialism with capacity for interfaith collegiality, vocational resilience, and how about doing all of that with a little joy? I think we heard wisdom would call us to do so. Let us in humility and with faith, find ways to see and hear one another and be bold to combine our resources to move in ways to empower congregations, organizations, ministries and movements to align with the work of God already going on in the world, the redemptive, reparative, resisting, and restoring work of God's love, justice, and mercy. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Reverend Valerie, would you offer us a benediction as we go? Yes. Friends, you've heard from Wisdom's Table. You've sang songs together and prayed together, heard the blessings for our friend, our sister, our kin. Now, I ask you to dance in the world with wisdom after having feasted at her table. Remind yourself that we can do hard things because we have been blessed by God. And now go and may God lift you up on angels' wings and bear you on the breath of dawn and cause you to shine like the sun and hold you into center of God's hand. Amen. <laughs>